part of me is uh, feeling shame and doesn't want to show you this. Uh, I have to look at the monitor. I don't know how to do this so you can see it. Here it comes. That's a healthy tooth. It got loose because the ones around it were missing. It's one of the last healthy teeth. We shall have one, two, three, four, four lower teeth on this side. And all of these are broken, but they're broken above the gum line so that I can still kind of chew. Over here, I have one, two teeth on the bottom and none left on the top. I have pulled, this is the seventh of my teeth that I have pulled. I've accidentally, uh, a couple of them came out by accident and I swallowed them with food. And, um, one of them got stuck. Ugh. just inside my anus for days and was poking and was hurting me. I was literally biting myself in the ass. It finally passed. That's the seventh tooth, people. And I want you to, um, I want you to acknowledge that I have to perform my own dentistry because I can't get access to dental care. I've been working on that for weeks. It hurt very badly to chew. You know, that sandwich I ate yesterday, it was so hard to bite into it. And not, it just is.
when I was in junior high school. I don't know, 12, 13 years old, I had a homeroom teacher. I don't know his name. And he would have us debate topics. And one of them was about when it was going to get too expensive to provide um, medical care for American citizens. And it was a medical ethics question about who we would let die. That was uh, 40 years ago. And I remember being afraid of bleeding. I remember being afraid then that it would be me. Um, about 20 years ago in uh, the war zone in Albuquerque, I was being forcibly evicted. I had allowed the children in the war zone to come to my house after school and on weekends. I was the Kool-Aid mom. They could do their homework there. I taught them how to garden, how to cook. We used to get on the bus and go to the library so I could help with their homework. It's why I got on the internet. I bought a web TV that was on sale at Big Lots for only $100. So I could get on the internet so that I could help them with their homework. It was easier than trying to collect enough quarters. That's 25 cents, which is a quarter of a dollar. Um, to get them all on the bus, to take them downtown to the library, and get them back quick enough so that the transfer would work, so that 25 cents would be a round trip. Well, I lived on the south side of Copper Avenue, and that's where all the um, poor people live in um, multifamily rental units apartment buildings and so on. North of Copper are the single family homes, most of them old, owned by older white couples, middle class white couples, and they hated us. Oh, there's all kinds of barriers and barricades now so people can't drive across Copper North into their community, that kind of thing. They created the La Mesa, but they don't want the neighborhood called the War Zone, they want it called the La Mesa community. So they started the La Mesa uh, CIA, Community Improvement Association. And they decided they were going to get me out of the neighborhood because I let kids come over to my house. I had a huge garden and chickens and it was a boarding house. I rented out rooms mostly to Mexican immigrant men. And uh, they called the uh, zoning, and they called animal control, and they called child protective services, and they called the police, and they called the fire department, and they all showed up outside in the street one day. And they finally figured out how to do it, and they had the house condemned for wiring violations in the garage. That's all they could get me for. They thought I had a gang. They sent the gang unit. The gang unit in Albuquerque doesn't even speak Spanish. You know that? There was something that I painted on the wall that was in Spanish. It was, Sembramos justicia para cosechar paz y libertad. We sow the seeds of freedom to grow peace and liberty. I spray painted it with a flower and iris. They wanted to know what it meant, and I told them. They thought it was gang tagging. Anyway, they got me um, thrown out of the neighborhood. There's more to it. I got eight-foot pickets to make a fence around the property to keep the drug dealers out and stuff. And I didn't have enough of any one color paint, but I had all this leftover paint. The kids went with me on the bus, so a place where you can drop off hazardous materials. And that includes house paint. We went on the bus with suitcases with wheels. And we dragged home all this free paint. They let you take the chemicals for free on certain days of the week. So every kid got to paint a board a different color. They got to paint multiple boards, of course. And it looked like a box of crayons. And then they painted, you know, Tibetan prayer flags? Well, they made like a prayer fence. And there were flowers and stars and hearts and names of people who had died.
And when the cops came, they we had just had a little powwow in the front yard. Even some local native people brought their drums. We sold fry bread. And we had a little fire pit, and the fire department was right down the road, so I asked them if it was okay to do it. They said, yes, just have a bucket of water right by the fire pit, and blah, blah, blah. So they were cool with it. <clears throat> so Monday morning, after all that was over, and I'm outside cleaning up the, you know, the paper towels and the paper plates and, you know, putting things back. Here come all these people, fire trucks and police cars and county and city vehicles. And they're all lined up out front. And the gang unit man asked me, the cop asked me, why is that fire pit in a circle? And I'm thinking, why would I dig a square fire pit? And then he said, uh, why do you have stars painted on the fence? And I thought, why is he asking about the stars and not about the hearts and the flowers and, and the little animals and stuff the kids have painted? And then he said, because I had a little flock of baby chickens, and they were running around. I said, why do you have those chickens? And I said, you think I'm a Satanist, don't you? Well, you seem to know a lot about it. So in their police report, they wrote down that I was a paranoid schizophrenic because I wouldn't let them inside the gate because they didn't have a search warrant. And I, didn't, I told them, I said, I don't know why you're here. I don't know what you want. See, well, let us come in so we can talk to you. I said, you can talk to me just fine. It's a chicken wire fence. You can talk to me just fine through the fence. I'd like to know why you're here. So they wrote down that I was paranoid, schizophrenic, and a self-proclaimed witch. And they got the fire marshal to condemn the place because of some completely legal wiring out in the garage. My um, landlord had started his IT business out in the garage. And for those of you who know about IT, you know damn well that he had his bases covered with his electrical out in the garage. I was immediately evicted on the spot. The neighbors came in. They hauled me to a mental hospital in an ambulance, and I had to pay for the ambulance ride for a psych psychiatric evaluation. I was immediately homeless. It was 4th of July weekend. It was a Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Couldn't get a hold of any legal aid beginning of a three-day holiday it was the third of july my disability check comes in on the third automatically deposited my bank account immediately evicted the neighbors knew it they broke in and started robbing me they stole my checkbook and they wiped out my bank account well I got permission to come back to pack my stuff. I had a temporary place to stay, and I had to perform duties as a sex worker to keep a roof over my head. And uh, I would come back during the day and um, pack my things. I was told if I was there after dark that I could be arrested for trespassing because they were assuming I was going to sleep there. I had an old Winnebago. I was trying to fix it up, and it had something wrong with the ignition switch, but I didn't know that. I thought something was wrong with the battery cable. I was outside at the battery compartment trying to fix it, and a gang of thugs came by. Bitch, bitch. And what they were going to do to me. And I made the mistake of saying, yeah, it takes a real man to terrorize a disabled woman all alone in the dark. And one of them picked up a rock and threw it at my head and hit me right here. My face cracked open and I was bleeding. I went to my church two doors down to get some first aid because I couldn't go in the house. It was dark. The electricity was off. I didn't have any first aid equipment in there. And some people were renting the basement of the church. This is the last time I ever set foot in that church. And they saw me bleeding and they freaked out and they canceled their contract with the church to rent the space in the basement. And the minister said, that if I had any more problems, I couldn't come there. Don't bleed on the carpet kind of deal. That was a queer church, by the way. Open to all denominations and supposedly atheists and agnostics and pagans. And I never went back. So I didn't get any medical treatment because I had to get the hell out of there. I got the uh, RV running and I took it back over to the East Mountains. Not too far from where I'm living now.
and of course that far away there wasn't any medical care and like I said I had to perform sexual favors and I was pretty much I was a captive in that house so I didn't get any medical care well about two years later I went to uh, the doctor complaining of headaches stiffness in my neck and I told him I'd been beaten in the head with that rock and had never received any care they had me pee in a cup. I told them about the ringing in my ears, which I still have to this day. And mind you, this was 20 years ago. Uh, I told them about the ringing in my ears and some other symptoms, and I think that I have a fever and so on. So they had me pee in a cup in case I had a bladder infection. And they wrote off the rest of it as um, psychiatric, as hypochondria, because I had made the mistake when my daughter died of going into the University of New Mexico mental health for psychotherapy because I was I was uh, suicidal so they just dismissed my complaints about my head as psychosomatic they didn't even look at my head if they'd opened my mouth I didn't know this I had an abscessed molar it was cracked it finally broke off and uh, see, I've been eating pieces of my teeth too my teeth so that was the beginning of it you know my last girlfriend we lived together three and a half years I never kissed her on the mouth I wouldn't do it it's too easy to catch diseases from other people's um, decayed teeth I have brain injuries. I get abscesses here. I can feel abscesses up here. At times, my neck will get so stiff. I can't hardly bend it. My glands here will swell. At one time, my face swelled up, I guess, about twice its normal size. And I demanded, I just walked into a local clinic. This is when I was still living in Albuquerque. And I demanded they give me a penicillin shot. Well, this is a dental health issue. And I... I can't. The copay for me to walk into a dental clinic is at least $35 a visit. Can't afford that. Plus, you have to be there very, very early in the morning, like hours before they open, to stand in line. And these are clinics that are in bad parts of town. I don't want to be standing out there in the dark alone. For hours you know I don't have a cell phone <sighs> if you show up when the clinic opens it's too late and the weather here you know in the winter <clears throat> so um, You know, when I went to the clinic just recently and he said about the MRI and all that kind of stuff, he hasn't said anything about dental care or how I would get it. The trip to Albuquerque, the gasoline cost me about 20 bucks. I'm supposed to qualify for something called Safe Ride where I can get transportation. But there's always some excuse why I fall through the cracks. Yeah, I sent a box to Great Britain and it cost a hundred dollars. You know why? There's a point at which a person gets fed up with hearing that she's not allowed to be human anymore. And I insist in this one tiny, tiny little part of my life that contains my heart, I insist that I'm going to take care of it and provide for it 
and celebrate it. Do you have any idea how much fun I had putting that box together over the last three months? And this is a person who doesn't know what a pork rind is. Who was fascinated with the concept of refried beans, frivolous. I wanted to send some of myself over there that she could touch. Sort of an ugly Betty box. You know, I told you I collect ugly Betty. I got this ugly Betty stuff. Uh, this is two years ago now. When the show went off the air. And how much cheer it brings me. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I have something beautiful from my show that reminds me that not fitting the standards of the fashion industry or the norms of gender and sexual orientation it doesn't mean that you can't have a quality life. It doesn't mean that you're not lovable. It doesn't mean that you don't have a contribution to make or your own native genius. I went through hell last summer. I was left homeless twice in one month. And almost every, almost lost everything I owned. And the goats died. I guess. I don't know. And uh, Ugly Betty, old episodes of Ugly Betty were on Hulu. And they gave me so much strength. Thank you, Selma Hayek, for producing that. Thank you to the writers and to the actors. And to everybody who put something into that. Thank you. I probably never watched commercial TV, and I was pretty much not watching it anymore anyway when Ugly Betty came on. And, um... It helped me find my courage, and it's so bright and colorful and rich and so can't help being an ugly old hag. You notice this pillow? This is who you're supposed to fear. The Christians want you to fear. An old woman with a cat and bad teeth. Funny looking. Crazed. So yeah, I'm a atheist and I identify myself as a witch because boy they get mistakes fired up again aren't they okay I can't upload this because I'm still waiting for the one from this morning to upload and it's on my netbook and it's taking I guess it's gonna be six half hours is five hours right because it's 300 minutes so well, actually it's about seven because it was 340 minutes something like that it's over half done and it's uh 6 30 p.m here i've been working on it all day i'm tired of hating myself because i fell through somebody else's cracks because i don't fit into the bottom line and the profit margin because they don't see any way to make money off of me except to lock me up in prison as slave labor or make a medical experiment out of me hmm. or sell me a payday loan or rent to own furniture or be a slum lord the parasites are bleeding me dry 
So Steve likes to curse. You know, I did that thing about taking a bath, you know, that five naked things with hats. And the one thing, the one fact about me that he was the most impressed. Well, I mean, there was a lot of impressive facts, but he was impressed that I had pulled some of my own teeth. I better go drink something salty. This is the United States of America. If somebody can help me leave this country and go someplace where I'll be safe, where I can live out the rest of my life in peace, I don't know what to do about the cats and dogs, but if somebody can help me get out of here and get someplace safe, please let me know. Mexico's fine, but keep me away from the narco terrorists, please. Like an address in Brownsville or something like that, and live over the frontera. I speak a little Spanish. I could, I can make do. But I have to be able to get a bank account in in the states, and I have to have Social Security thinking I'm living in the states. I can get good dental care in Mexico. That's enough.